it's crucial for a, an educational charity like the IEA. We're non-party political to reach right across the political spectrum and we look for allies, friends, people who are interested in ideas, wherever we can find them, uh, even if we don't agree with everything they say. So I'm really delighted that uh, our next speaker has agreed to join us this evening. He's a commentator and political strategist who works right across the globe. He was the Labour Party advisor on health, welfare, regeneration, defence in Scotland, was Tony Blair's director of political operations. He also worked on the 2007 campaign for the Australian Labour Party. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome John McTurnan. Well, can I just say first thank you for inviting me? Um, this is a, it's just a magnificent setting, isn't it? I think uh, it's the best place to launch uh, a major document. I think the grandeur of the setting, the magnificence of the setting in the history should inspire us to think deeply and speak wisely. Um, and I'm pleased to be here personally. I'm pleased to be here to see the launch of this IEA project. I think it's a really important project. These are serious questions. They need serious attention. I'm particularly pleased that it's, it's a lengthy piece of work, not just a short piece of work. I think it's right we take stock of what government does. Uh, I do think we need to be vigilant about government. More government, more spending, um, in and of themselves, are not good. I'm clear about that. It depends not just on the intentions. It depends on the outcomes. And this is a quite important moment. Um, with the death of Lord Healy, the death of Lord Howe, the publication of the second <coughs> volume of Margaret Thatcher's official biography. We're kind of marking the end of an era. People are leaving, uh, have left the stage, the giants have left. And measured against the figures of the past, Margaret Thatcher obviously, Tony Blair in my view, it's not clear that our current leaders are up to the mark, are the people who can face up to the big questions that Britain, Europe, the world faces. Take Europe, I think the current crop of politicians have narrow horizons. For them, the world, the world is Europe. And for them, Europe is the European Union. And for them, the European Union is a referendum on leaving or staying. The world has been transformed, I think, you made that, those points really very well. The world has been transformed by giant forces, many of them the unleashing of markets, and yet our politicians have shrunk, shrunk in size and scale and stature and ambition. So let's go back to 79, just to think about this. I'm trying to put some context on our, this project. Margaret Thatcher was elected because of a catastrophic failure of socialism and social democracy as a political and economic model. There's no doubt in my mind about that. She had an answer, the liberalisation of the economy. She didn't answer everything. Tony Blair answered some things, I think, reforming public services, liberalising society, those were important things too. But they dealt, however well they dealt with it, with the problems of the past. And we are in a moment where we face the reality of 2008. And I'm as little a fan of Piketty um, as most people in this room, I suspect, which I'm not a fan. Um, <laughs> but 2008, the global financial crisis, was a crisis of capitalism. As profound as for capitalism and those who believe in capitalism as I do, as the, as the collapse in the 70s of the socialist, social democratic model was. But there has been no adequate, in my view, adequate in Britain, probably not in Europe either, no adequate coming to terms with that from the left or from the right. No reckoning, no sustained political response. That is a big deal uh, because that was a major crisis. And what do we have? In my view, we've got kindergarten economics from the Tory party um, and we've got reheated 70s leftism from the Labour Party. Neither of which are adequate to the situation we're in, let alone the future we might want to have and to share. So. Tonight's launch. I welcome this because if the politicians won't ask the right questions about Britain and the future, someone has to do it for them. But 
As the Paragon Initiative goes forward, there's just three points I'd like to make. I'd say they're notes of caution, um, notes of just helpful advice. First, in that film, one of the things that was pointed out correctly uh, is that privatization has removed from the state and the power of the state huge, huge areas. But we need to remember why privatization triumphed. It won because the evidence was accumulated. It won because the argument was made and remade. It won because experience emboldened those in favor of privatization, and it was taken further. But it was celebrated. The successes were celebrated. Privatization went around the world, and the IEA has an honorable role in that. Um, still has further to go in the UK, in my view. Um, that's not that's a mainstream view uh, amongst the British people. Not necessarily a mainstream view amongst my party at the moment, but um, <laughs> what didn't win in the 70s and the 80s and the 90s was pure assertion. The fight wasn't won by saying the public is bad, but private is good. It was the evidence and the argument that mattered. And that's really my second point. But it's a lot of what you had in your video, if I'm honest, and it's best for a friend to be honest to you, was. It started from the point of view that government is bad in principle. And that therefore, it's always more government's going to be worse. Now, that's a view. It's a view with a very long and distinguished history. But brutally, it's not a majoritarian position. So, and it, in my view, it never will be a majoritarian position in the UK, which is really my third point. Never forget the public. Never forget them. The reason why privatization is permanent is not just that it's right, it's that it's popular. But it hasn't, and you made that point very well, it's not made government that much smaller. So government retreats from making cars, drilling for oil, drilling for gas, generating electricity, building airplanes, running an airline, managing the airport the airline flies from, got rid of all those things. But what's it done? It's moved from industrial production to social production. In education, to be honest, you know, massive expansion and provision. Childcare is now accepted as part of state provision of education. The school leaving age is, is effectively 18 now. And for all that the cost of university has been transferred onto, uh, onto individual students, a massive expansion in that has been really driven by, by government. In health, spending has risen through Labour and through Tory governments. And government, I mean, on top of this, like basic <coughs> core functions, government promises to solve so many other social problems. Rough sleeping, uh, jihadist extremism, um, plastic bags. Like, you name a problem and government will legislate for it. So I know that traditionally power abhors a vacuum. So that's one explanation of what's going on. But another one is actually perhaps government is both a burden and a luxury, by which I mean everybody wants inefficient government spending reduced, red tape removed, bureaucracy reduced, the state off their back, off their back as individuals. But for most people, most voters, currently what that does is free up resources to be spent on things, public goods that they actually want and they desire. We're a rich country and so we're choosing to spend it on the kinds of things that benefit us as types of consumption, health, or education. So I would be aware, if I were you, of trying to tell the public what you want them to hear. What you need to tell the public is what they need to hear in a way that they will hear it. And that's been the trick of the IEA, the success of the IEA. It's been, over the 60-year history, it's been being right and being persistent. It's not simply that the reports have been written, commissioned, published. They've been, every five years, the same report was reissued from the, you know, the mid-50s. There were dark days when every IA report was just recommissioned every five years. And it seemed like nothing was going to happen then from 75 onwards. It really took it. But do not, well, honestly, if you want to keep doing that for the next 50 years, 60 years, publishing and publishing and publishing and hoping a thatch will come along. Do that. If you want the initiative to have an impact, 
go in with an open mind and come out with persuasive arguments.